it's been a minute, but I'll take a little break from the full series, but I'm back again. So hopefully that's cool with you guys. This one is going to be a Rails, let's build with Rails, Ruby on Rails, uh, app that's based around consulting. And the general idea is just to kind of give a onboarding process for a user who in essence is maybe a one man show. So they're the admin side and then it can they can have clients come to the site, sign up, um, schedule a session and pay for it all in one swoop. And then that client can see their upcoming meetings or sessions. Um, and then the admin can either manage users, cancel a meeting, et cetera, or just overlying edits to the app. So I'll show you how it's basically done. I already have a couple user accounts created just to save time, but this is just a fictitious homepage, fictitious app. But the concept is, is uh, showing off some new stuff I haven't done. Uh, of yet, uh, like mailers, there's a mailer in this one and a more Stripe implementation, kind of just a, a basic charge. Um, we're using a calendar gem, um, stuff like that. So I'll just walk you through. It's a pretty simple app at, at its core, but the whole point is just getting maybe you more familiar with Rails as you progress in learning it, if you're, if you're like me. What I'm going to do is just walk you through. Like I said, I already have an account. This is going to be the person who's signed up already uh, and created an, a new session is what they call them. But it, the model is called meeting, just for clarity. So um, my traditional J Smitty account, I'll sign in. So this is the dashboard you land on. I've implemented some tabs. So here we could display all the person's meetings that they've established or created. Uh, each meeting is going to come with uh, a show page like this, and it will show the start time and end time. And then you can make comments on it. Uh, we use the gym called Tricks here from the guys at Basecamp. And this is a, a nice WYSIWYG. That's, it's not Markdown. can't use Markdown with it, but it is very nice to throw in the stack uh, pretty easily. So I went ahead and chose it as opposed to implementing something custom. Um, it doesn't support any drag and drop files or anything yet, but there is capability of doing that. I'm, I might consider doing that in a future uh, series, but since I created this comment, you see it's formatted. Um, it is done so by this gem, the tricks gem. So I could just say another comment. And in theory, the admin of the app and the user would just converse at this point. So it's it's there's not a ton of logic behind anything other than the fact that the admin can see all of these meetings based on their session. So uh, we'll create a comment and you notice it just updates in real time. It's doing some Ajax behind the scenes. Uh, since I created this comment, I can go ahead and delete it. It'll go ahead and do that. And if you want to schedule a new session, you could do so. It's just a basic form, but we do ask for a name for the meeting, the date time. Uh, this could be way cooler. I actually tried to implement something like a date picker and time picker, but it was getting kind of crazy because date and time is hard. Um, but it is possible, especially with just dates. Um, that's There's plenty of gems out there for that. But establishing time with the date picker is, is an also kind of complicated scenario. And I just didn't have the time to actually implement that. So uh, there's an improvement that could be made there for sure. Uh, we do have Stripe elements implemented here. Each charge to create a meeting is 189. I just have that preset on the controller. Um, it could be whatever you want though, if you want it to be custom. So creating a new meeting, I could just do Another meeting, I'll say starts today, ends tomorrow, we'll go past the current time, it's about an hour to there. And then I did a neat thing where you can actually justify how many units you use in terms of minutes on the time. So it's 24 hour time, uh, but then you can just adjust how many steps it takes so that can be customized. Uh, since this is local, we're just doing local development. I'll use a test card for Stripe. Enter whatever there. The card number only matters. 
And but you can see I've already made a, a meeting. Um, so you see previously used data here. That's stuff I just store for the user who creates a new session uh, using the Stripe gem and then some other fields on the table. So then you see the meeting was created and that's that. So that's basically the scope of the app. Uh, the calendar gem here is called Simple Calendar from Chris at GoRails. He actually created this gem. It's pretty handy. But you can see the date that those are actually being held on your dashboard. It just kind of just dictates the current day, the meeting you've actually created. Uh, you can click through to it to see the actual meeting show page. And then you could just see a list view of all your meetings too, if that helps. Um, when you do create a meeting, there is a mailer that gets sent that is new, at least to what I've been talking about. So you can go to, what is it? Do we have mailers, rails, mailers? Yeah. So you can actually see your mailers in your browser. Thanks to rails. They have a preview in the test folder. Uh, that actually displays each mailer you, you create based on the mailer class name and its appropriated methods. So this is one I created for it, and this was the one that was just sent. Yeah, I think that was the one that was sent. It might have been one from the last session, but you'll see I customized the from email, the two email courses to the user, are the the current the first user in the database so we're just using dummy data here it's not real data um, but then we could customize the subject and then of course the view of the email so it's all pretty cool um, new stuff there uh, the other thing to note is i'm running this on localhost 5000 using a gem called foreman and it, basically it's a cool way to boot up a server um, running multiple threads in essence in one terminal so here you can see um, all the, the logs of the web based one but if i were to just i'll just kill it real quick um, because this app comes with sidekick and webpack and stuff behind the scenes i use foreman to boot those all up at once so you could just do that handily um, yeah, that works based on a proc file, which is in root of the app here. And it just runs these three things all at once. It's just a quick way to, to do that. So it's just a handy workflow thing. I should mention, I am using my kickoff tailwind application template. If you found my previous video that it was, I guess, based on time or date, my previous video was on rails application templates and how to set those up. This was that template. So I'm getting Webpack and Sidekick out of the box. By default, Rails ships with a, a configuration that is, I'm going deep in the weeds here, so sorry if it's too much, but um, basically uh, how you do active background jobs. And to do those, I'm trying to find the file uh, application. Uh, you can actually pass in what queue adapter to use. And in this case, it's Sidekick for me. Uh, you can use one that's just, um, I think there's another one called delay job, uh, but it's, they all work relatively the same way. Sidekick is pretty popular. So it's just one of those things that I've just got on, gotten on board with as I've moved through building apps. Um, but basically it's a way to queue things to happen later and sequentially. So if you want to queue things to happen based on events or time or delay them after a while, you can do so with that. So your app's like always working in the background, whether it's like with cron jobs or active jobs, all those things. So it gets pretty technical, but what actually happens is on the controller coming up, I'll, I'll get into the weeds with this, but we end up sending a meeting mailer and it's queued by sending this delay later uh, call which actually activates that sidekick process in the background. So pretty deep, pretty, pretty cool. The more you use this, the more it makes sense. Uh, you could do something like deliver now, but you wouldn't want to go that route simply because that would pretty much annihilate your server resources. If your app is a big app and you need to send a lot to a lot of users or a lot of emails all at once, it would just kind of melt down. So um all of that and more coming up so we'll just kind of kick things off starting with our application template 
uh, configuring that a bit, installing some some extra gems we'll need, and then getting on our way. So in the next video, we'll start that.